Hello boys, welcome back to another session of video tutorials and this session is meant for class 12th biology students and this is meant for 30th June 2020. If you recollect from your memory, we were talking about the four functions of ecosystem and we said that the four functions are productivity, decomposition, energy flow and nutrient cycling. Productivity we were discussing yesterday. It's a rate of biomass production per unit area. And in that primary productivity, grass, GPP we said, then we said NPP, and then we talked about secondary productivity. Then second function, decomposition and detritus, detritivores, and stages of decomposition, five stages we talked yesterday, fragmentation of detritus, leaching, catabolism, humification, and mineralization. Now, today we talk about factors affecting rate of decomposition. What is the speed at which the materials will be decomposed depends on the following factors. One, chemical composition. The Decomposition rate will be slow when detritus is rich in lignin and chitin. Remember when lignin and chitin, these are the two tough chemicals. When they are present, the decomposition rate will be slow. The rate increases when detritus is rich in nitrogen and water soluble substances like sugars. And then climatic factors also will affect like a warm and moist environment favor decomposition. Whereas low temperature and anaerobic biosis uh, inhibit, inhibit means not encouraging, uh, inhibit the decomposition. And then we talk about the food chain. What is the food chain? And uh, one more factor that we must remember in the, in the factors that affect uh, decomposition is oxygen availability. Decomposition is uh, dependent on oxygen availability. So more the oxygen, faster the decomposition. Next, we talk about uh, energy flow. And energy flow, of course, all of you know, sun is the ultimate source of energy in all ecosystems. Just 50% of the solar radiations striking the Earth's surface is photosynthetically active radiation. We say PAR. PAR means photosynthetically active radiation. The visible wavelengths and However, even under optimum conditions, only a very small proportion, about 1 to 5% of incoming radiation, that is 2 to 10% of PR, is used during photosynthesis for GPP. What is GPP? Grass primary productivity. Roughly 20% of it is consumed in respiration, so that net capture of energy, that is NPP, is 0.8 to 4% of incident radiation or 1.6 to 8% of PAR, that is photosynthetically active radiation. In fact, only about, now please note down, in fact, only about 0.02% of sunlight reaching the atmosphere is used for photosynthesis. How much? 0.02. And it is this small fraction on which all the organisms of the ecosystem depend. Can you think of how to increase this? from 0.02% if we can make it little bit higher just imagine what would be the productivity so think on those lines how to increase this percentage of sunlight that is actually tapped by the plants so different tropic levels we see that is each tropic level is a division in a food chain first what is food chain it is transfer of energy or food from the producer through a series of organisms is known as food chain. We can say it is the linear relationship of organisms for the sake of food. I'll repeat, food chain is linear relationship. Means it's like a line, straight line, 180 degrees. It's a linear relationship for food among the organisms. So when each organism depends for food on other, automatically through food we get energy that means it is transfer of energy so transfer of energy takes place from one organism to another organism 
so naturally the starting point has to be producer because the producers only will be having a lot of energy through photosynthesis and we must be thankful to lord the sun for this without lord the surya just imagine how even producers can survive so be thankful to lord the surya for all that that is happening in our ecosystem so basically a tropic level tropic level is a division of food chain which is characterized by method of obtaining its food how the organism gets food so the number of tropic levels is equal to the number of steps in the food chain let's say there is a small food chain like uh, you have been familiar with uh, grass so of course grass undergoes photosynthesis with the help of sunlight so basically we talk about the sunlight source of light and that sunlight will be absorbed by the grass uh, which is a producer because it undergoes photosynthesis and the grass will be eaten by grasshopper you know grasshopper since it is eating uh, grass it is called herbivore so here grass is a producer grasshopper is a consumer and in turn grasshopper will be eaten by some other organism let's say a rabbit and rabbit will be eaten by a lion or cheetah so we have got series of consumers and of course we cannot forget the role of decomposers as well as detritivores so in a food chain it is a straight linear relationship for the sake of food and when they consume food from the lower strata or lower uh, uh, tropic level it means there is a flow of energy so different steps in a food chain are called tropic levels the two fundamental tropic levels in a food chain you must remember is producers and com- consumers like just, just now i said the grass is a producer because it is producing starch through photosynthesis and we talk of grasshopper grasshopper to say uh, snake snake to peacock these are all consumers and peacock to human beings of course like this and in the in this food chain decomposers also play a very important role and uh, parasites do not have any fixed tropic level since they feed on producers herbivores as well as carnivores of various levels so a food chain involves a nutritive interaction between the living organisms biotic components of an ecosystem depending upon where the food chain is taking place we have got varieties of food chains and remember the energy flow in all the food chains is always unidirectional that is from producers to highest consumers so it is in a food chain there is unidirectional flow of energy so the basic uh, types of food chains are first one gfc grazing food chain the food chain begins with the producer as i said just now grass and uh, herbivore like a goat will be eating the grass and in turn goat will be eaten by man so here you got uh, broadly if you carefully observe this food chain there are two one grass is a producer goat and man is consumer so we say since goat is having uh, having the ability to eat grass we say it is herbivore and the man since he is eating goat we say carnivore and since man eats everything we can also call him as omnivore that means under consumers you have got herbivore carnivore and omnivore and of course a day will come a time will come where everything has to die and get decomposed here when the organism dies there is a role of decomposers and the dead and uh, dead organisms dead plants and dead animals get decomposed by detritivores so we got next one detritus food chain the food chain that begins with dead organic matter as i said dead animal dead plant all this will be acted upon by detritivores recollect from the, your previous session try to recollect the examples of detritivores so the dead leaves will undergo decomposition forms the organic minerals that gets mixed up in the soil and that will be taken by the earthworm and earthworm will be fed by bird so this is 
you have to remember this detritus food chain and then you got something called saprophytes these are decomposers fungi and bacteria which feed on detritus so you got role of saprophytes is enormous and then we got as i said the tropic levels different tropic levels each step of the food chain is called tropic level like we were talking about here grass grass to goat is the next step that's a tropic level man is another tropic level similarly we have got uh, <clears throat> one more uh, that is parasitic food chain it is also called axillary food chain it begins with host and usually ends in parasite so try to remember the host to guest of course it is unwanted guest host to guest relationship then we say it's a parasitic food chain so in detritus food chain and grazing food chain if you carefully observe there is in uh, gfc particularly there is a producer there is a primary consumer there is a secondary consumer there is a tertiary consumer and top carnivores like we say producers they are all autotrophs and phytoplanktons like weeds diatoms and other green algae they are all producers and these will be eaten by primary consumers like herbivores just now we said like here in this case grass grass will be eaten by goat so goat is a herbivore primary consumer and secondary consumer the secondary consumers are those set of animals which eat the primary consumer so aquatic insects crustaceans and other aquatic organisms and then we get the next uh, strata that is tertiary consumers tertiary consumers can eat both primary consumers as well as secondary con- that's why i said omnivores or top carnivores like small fish and these tertiary consumers will be eaten by top carnivores that is large fish big fish so if you see in a gfc grazing food chain the food chain starts with producers ends with top carnivores producers primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and top carnivores and not to forget as i said all these will have to die one day and when they die there is a role of decomposers and detritivores hence their role is very very important just for a second you just think if decomposers like fungi and bacteria are not there in this world what about our fate on this earth just imagine if detritivores are not there on this earth what would be the fate of us hence every organism has its own importance so that is the reason why we say um, let live first we should live and allow all other organisms to live so we say live and let live if there is any disturbance in this food chain there is a total disturbance in the ecosystem and when we connect different food chains let's say many food chains are there and it forms a web like this then we say it is a food web look at this you can observe this one is becoming food for others like this one may be food for many organisms and you got a network of food chains this network of food chains where energy is flowing from one tropic level to another tropic level is called food web and basically in a food web what's happening there is energy flow and how does that take place this is how the energy flow so basically it is sun sun who is giving energy for us surya lord surya and he gives to producers and producers having chlorophyll absorb the sunlight just now we said it is 0.0% 0.02% and just i told you to think whenever you are free just use your brains and start thinking how to increase this and once the producers prepare it they are consumed by consumers and whenever we are eating something there is some energy some portion of energy is lost in the form of heat so there is a loss of heat when consumers are eating are are decomposed by decomposed there is a loss at a very strata at a very tropic level there is a loss of energy in the form of heat hence just imagine how much of energy we are wasting again start thinking 
how to save this can we save this energy can we increase our capacity to increase the energy so with that i'll leave you